Blink to the cloud. Here we go. We are live. Is somebody going to confirm that? We are, we live. are live. I can hear these multiple voices. It's great to uh, see you all here. Thanks so much for joining today. Um, this is, as you know, uh, but for those watching on YouTube, the John Lavinia Success Mastermind general session for today. Welcome everybody again. And uh, first of all, thanks to everybody for your really kind messages. I'm feeling absolutely great now, and I'm sorry to have missed out on some of the calls. I missed everybody. Uh, it was it was quite a bad week for getting knocked out, so uh, I had to take some time out. But we we really had um, quite a week again last week. Uh, I'm just going to mute us all just in case we get any background uh, noise cutting in. Yeah, I mean Stuart first of all. Stuart let the cat out of the bag literally uh, last Tuesday and immersed us in quantum physics. I think our minds are still spinning from that discussion. I said to Stuart last night that I would keep this talk in the bag overnight and see if it was dead in the morning. Uh, you can let me know in a while, see how it goes. In, uh, and also, yes, I'd forgotten in his previous talk, Stuart bombarded us with particles of rice, literally. Um, that was inspiring material as well. And all of that for me got me thinking again, and it just underlines how interconnected we all are and all of our worlds are despite all the challenges and obscuring effects of daily life. We're all interconnected, whatever is clouding the immediate vision. So wherever we are, first thing that struck me was that we can make a difference and our ripples in the pond, which we've referred to many times, will let loose the particles Stuart's talking about and the vibrations will be released from right here today and can potentially make changes all over other universes, our own universe and other dimensions. We absolutely have no idea what we're setting in motion when we set all of our energy together in this group, but we can, the most important thing is we can make a difference both for ourselves and for other people. And I was also reminded of the fact that really this is, uh, and we've just been talking about Brexit, there you go, another time of great stress and uncertainty. This is really and has been the most remarkable time of great stress and tension in the world that we can remember both at frontiers and borders, across frontiers, within nations. There have been massive challenges, Brexit being one of them. We still don't really know where we are, and we're a matter of days from formally totally leaving the transition period and being totally outside the EU. As I've said before, though, um, we can, at least as a starting point, with all this confusion raging around us, focus on our own immediate area, or as I called it, our, our square mile. And really, I wanted to for myself, remind myself that, you know, we need to be inclusive. We need to reach out right now today. There's a lot of people that have suffered. They've lost family and friends. They've perhaps lost their well-being, their livelihood, perhaps the direction of leadership they hoped for. We can all look through this, though. And, you know, we're all human beings. We can look to the human being, the person on the other side of the table, and to the real person underneath the veneer. Let's chip away and let's see the real person. Uh, and today, really, I sat down and started thinking about the fact that the year end is really, really rapidly approaching, literally like a freight train. It's right there in front of us. So this for me is a time to stand back and reset the plans and just assess where we've got to. So to me, this is a time to saying, let's take action for ourselves and for other people's, let's take action. I mean, in this mastermind group, for example, our simple actions can propel ourselves forward, but somebody else in the group forward as well and help them fulfill their potential. Then I took a look at the calendar and unfortunately saw that it was week 47. And 47, my gosh, that's that's getting on. Year 47 of what is a tumultuous year, and I think it will be remembered as a tumultuous year. Uh, this Annus Horribilis, or horrible year, as the Queen once described the year that she suffered in 1992. Uh, you've got to be careful how you pronounce that as well, John. Uh, strangely though, 2020 has been an annus horribilis generally. But for many of us in this group, we've actually find new, we found new life. We found new life in the group and it's, it's given growth to new life, which has been just great to see. It's, it's uplifted me when I could have been sitting on my own in a box, uh, festering and worrying about my own problems. Um, so I, you know, I hope you've all drawn similar power from it. Anyway, uh, week 47, that really set me thinking. From the end of this week, five weeks to the year end, this is definitely time to act if there ever was one with that kind of year end deadline approaching. Just enough time though to make some plans, 
to capitalize on this year and to lay the ground for a really fulfilling 2021, in, in my view. We've got to bring ourselves so quickly right back down to earth and make a plan to capitalize on the actions we've taken to date so they're not wasted. It's a really, for me, dangerous time of the year in the sense that the year end really fractures time and, and it gives rise to yeah, New Year's resolutions, new directions, but valuable old thoughts and habits can be lost in the festivities and abandoned, which is not always a good thing. We can lose our daily routine. We can break the progress we've been making very easily and unintentionally just because we, we get lost in something else for what can be quite a prolonged festive period. Um, and also on the other side, how often do the New Year's resolutions we're all going to make just come to nothing? A damp rocket that threatens to go off and fly really high, but it just fizzles away when we've lit it on the ground and burns out, goes nowhere. That can easily happen as well. It often happens to me. You remember some months later, you did make a resolution you've forgotten to follow up on. But really, none of that needs to happen. I mean, you know, let's eat, drink and be merry, as they say in, 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 in Old English. But if we can act now in week 47 and fire up our plans right now, then those will be there and they'll be ready to pull us forward and out of that January mist and that January fog, as I'll call it, and act like one of Glenn's invisible tractor beams pulling us through. So we can do this. We can deal with it. And mentally, um, you know, I tend to see the year and I think a lot of people see the year end in business, in accounting, generally in life as signaling. That's it. The year's done. It's finished. It's complete. Well, it isn't. It's a rolling effort. It's a rolling 12 months. If we see it as a, an end of a period, again, that can fracture our efforts and break our thinking. It's a rolling effort. And for me, I need to be looking forward to the next hill crest after we break out and rest up in the festive period. So I wanted to um, just see where we, we'd gone with various things this year. And I, I was brought back to mind with mindset for next year. I, I Wayne's chair, he mentioned carrying around limiting behaviors almost as, as if we had a chair in front of us when we were trying to do things and talk to people and engage. And at the end of 2020, we really, really, after everything we've talked about and all the great things we've shared together, we can put that chair down. We can actually look forward. We can move freely and without inhibitions for 2021. There's no reason not to now. Um, and really, thanks, Wayne. That was a great talk. And it stuck, certainly stuck in my mind, that image of the chair. And I think several other people have mentioned it. The quantum as well and the scientific theorem that Stuart's laid before us over the last few weeks show really that the future is ours to make. I mean, any result is possible if we back a burning desire, as Napoleon Hill tells us, with a definite plan. And members of this group have already proved it to us. There, there are loads of them on the screen right now around you. I mean, Evelyn in Florida, for example, she's launched a whole new enterprise and it's already flying, it's already taking off. Um, you know, destiny, depending on our outlook, we can change destiny. It is the outcome of our future actions. I looked, I looked up the def, dictionary definition. I'm not sure if John's dictionary is to hand, but it said the particular state of a person or thing in the future. So if we act on our plans, our destiny is going to change. Well, it's at least going to change from what it would have been if we hadn't done anything. And hopefully if we do the right things consistently with the right thoughts and positive thoughts in our mind, it'll be a better future that we're going to create. And our, our current fate really is about the present. Every decision we've made, it's led us up to this present condition that we find ourselves in with our, th our thought process, our mindsets. It's led us to being in this group. But the future is still there. The destiny is the future. It's our future unpainted self-portrait. That's how I saw it in my mind. We can paint ourselves in the future. And that's going to be determined by the decisions we're going to make and the actions we're going to take right now and through 2021 and onwards. So let's fix on 2021 and really use it to catapult those plans we've started on further forward. Um, Everything's based on the dreams and plans that we allow ourselves, and allow is the word, we allow ourselves to conjure up. This is in our control. We can conjure up any dream or plan that we care to, and Napoleon Hill keeps ramming that home to us in every single chapter of the book. There really is no limit to our power to imagine any of these things. Imagination is the driver. Just sit down, think regularly, and keep dreaming, but we've got to do it all the time. Keep connected with that inner thought process where these ideas come from 
which is drawn from that well of experience we have over many, many decades. Um, we recently studied with John um, James Allen as a man thinketh. And in chapter six, he describes dreams and visions as the engine of everything, a really significant chapter and a really significant statement. If you haven't read it, I really recommend it, the whole, the whole book, but that chapter is fantastic. The thoughts and the language are, are really just quite beautiful and uplifting. It, it's, it's, an, it's amazing prose. Um, he, at one point, describes dreamers as the saviors of the world. And he goes on to say, he who cherishes a beautiful vision, a lofty ideal in his heart, will one day realize it. So dreams cannot be overstated. They are the engine and the driver of everything. He instructs us to dream lofty dreams, and as you dream, so you shall become. Your vision is the promise of what you shall one day be. Your ideal is the prophecy of what you shall at last unveil. So just reflect on that. I think we should probably pin that statement on the fridge and, uh, and have it there in 2021 right in front of us. I'd love to hear how it strikes you when we open up the floor, but it certainly really stuck with me. And I'll tell you one thing, Adrian Jay is definitely taking me out for a drive in that Tesla that he's dreaming of, because I know it's going to happen and I know it's real. Another example, um, in today's world, Lewis Hamilton, he won a record equaling seventh Formula One championship title last Sunday. And when he was interviewed, he said to us, think big, blaze your own trail and dream as big as you possibly can. There was no one like him, he said, in the sport when he was growing up, but he still held on to and developed his personal dream of being in that sport and being a champion anyway. He didn't look at the obstacles. He just kept the dream burning and worked on it every, every day. And I was also, from another viewpoint, drawn to looking at uh, constructing and translating dreams uh, through weaving as another metaphor, weaving as a metaphor for life. Uh, was brought to my mind by a broadcast this weekend on the radio in the UK. Because in order to weave, you've got to cross two threads in a pattern many, many times in order to produce the final cloth or the tapestry. So we can actually weave any cloth that we can conceive of, but we have to first grasp and fix the threads and combine them carefully. And it's a whole process ending in the practical textile at the end and sometimes very beautiful textiles at the end. So Really, we can all seek those threads out, grasp them with both hands and weave them in our minds into that beautiful personal cloth of gold. And then the important thing is act on it. As John would say, get it done, act on it. It's no good if it remains a dream. But anyway, let's dream again. At the end of this year, week 47, let's dream again. I certainly lost mine for a while in what I'll describe as the sands of disappointment, uh, having become bogged down and stuck. But let's dream again and really push forward. So today I really wanted to make a call to action. Um, make hay while the sun shines and act now and look forward and just don't look back. Um, the coffee shop sign right in front of me this morning said, don't stumble over something behind you. And someone else has posted that comment a couple of months back and it really stuck in my mind again. Don't stumble over something behind you. There's absolutely no need to take any notice of what's already happened to you it's irrelevant now. You are where you are right now and you can go forward from here. You don't have to go through that obstacle behind you to get here. You've already done it. So let's go forward. And just remember that action in, in again, in old parlance, Brook. And I mentioned Napoleon Bonaparte several times in the chat. He always said he only saw his objective and the obstacles must give way. There was no compromise in his mind whatsoever over taking action. So Again, don't be put off taking action. Just let's think laterally. How can I not if I could? It's out there. Find a way because it's definitely, definitely out there if we're inventive enough. And Napoleon Hill, again, keeps time and time hammering it into us that we can find the way if we don't give up. So going back to another discussion uh, metaphors Wayne had a few weeks ago, um, we talked about the significance of doors. Let's kick in the closed door. Don't just accept the, the apparently closed door in front of you. Blast through it. It opens. It either opens or you can kick it in and get through. And Napoleon Hill, as I say, just keeps going on and on about this to try and get us out of our chairs and taking action. He actually says, make yourself such a nuisance that they give in. Don't give up. Get to a point where you become such a nuisance to the other side 
to the person you're trying to get something from that they give in. And he actually gives us a real example of a Broadway singer from the era called Kate Smith. And he says in this passage, thousands of singers who excel Kate Smith are walking up and down Broadway looking for a break without success. Countless others have come and gone. Many of them sang well enough, but they failed to make the grade because they lacked the courage to keep on keeping on until Broadway became tired of turning them away. Now that's, that's another memorable passage. That's the kind of persistence and determination you've got to have. Don't take no for an answer and be put off by people who are not enthusiastic, probably a bit negative, can't be bothered, don't want to go to the effort of trying to help out with your request. You've got to keep pushing. And again, he talks about persistence, Napoleon Hill in chapter nine of his book, and says, if you find yourself lacking in that kind of persistence to become that much of a nuisance, that weakness in your persistence can be remedied by building a stronger fire under your desire. So that's again back to the dreams, choose the right dream and really want it so that you can build a stronger fire to get the kind of motivation and, and um, propulsion needed to blast through and become a nuisance and get what you want. So take persistent action until they are tired of turning you away. Don't be embarrassed, just be polite. There's no need to be embarrassed. You could always be polite, but politely persistent. Um, and my own experience right now, taking a look at 2020 is I'm definitely off course, but I'm still going. I'm still going, I'm still going forward. I'm taking small steps forward. I'm still taking action. I know I'm gonna get back on course, but I've got to adjust the rudder. So that's why it's stop take at what we'll call week 47, the year end. But in this week 47, let's create the dreams and let's live them. Um, we can take action relentlessly, persistently, and right now is, is a great time to do that, to dream, to plan, to act on it. Uh, Churchill said, action this day. He had stickers on his desk that he stuck on task saying, action this day. In other words, deal with it right now, today. Don't put it off to tomorrow. The Romans said, carpe diem, seize the day. Another famous Roman, uh, John to be precise, said one would now be a good time to act. So let's Let's think, you know, what specific action can we take? What can we do? Not all the problems. They're always going to be there. Just forget about the problems and say, out of all this noise, what actions can I actually take? And let's see what happens. So we can right now avoid sinking into that New Year hole, as I'll describe it, and end up adrift in that January fog that I mentioned and, and ask ourselves if we've really projected forward into 2021, if we've set the targets, created the dreams and are they ready for action? I'm going to leave you on that note with a, another thought from James Allen. He, he said, the oak sleeps in the acorn, a beautiful, beautiful quote. And I, I can tell you from my point of view, for certain that right here and right now in this mastermind group, we're all spinning dreams and we're spinning threads of life into beautiful, beautiful cloth. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of that. I really would. And thanks all for listening. I, Appreciate every single member of this amazing family. I'd like to open the floor at that point and see who has thoughts on week 47, the year end dreams and taking action, among other things, or anything else that strikes you. Um, Evelyn, you have your hand up. I've had my hand up for a while already, Adrian. This is such an amazing, amazing call and session. Thank you so very much. Um, the first thing that you touched on was something that really touched my heart. And I'm gonna do a call to action also to the other friends here on the call, reaching out to others. There are some dark times coming upon some of us. I'm gonna say us, so I don't say you, you know, to a particular group. I am always trying to reach out to everyone and follow up and check in and see how everyone is doing. But um, I think that is, this is something that we should all take upon ourselves if we haven't seen someone reach out. You know, if they're not on the call every day of the week, if there is a reason for it. They're working, obviously, but we also got to check in. They are our family. So that will be one of the things that I think is very important uh, because I'm doing okay. Doesn't mean that everyone is okay, is dealing with things with you know, uh, COVID or work situation, sometimes we don't hear about someone, 
So please help me out and extend a hand to our family. And the other thing that I love what you said is never give up and be persistent. You guys, I may not be the top story on sales on Amazon, but as sure as heck, I'm not going to give up. Thankfully, I am making sales on both ends, um, private label and also with the replenishments. And it's going very well. And right now I'm preparing myself for January, not for December, not November Black Friday, it's for next year because we're not giving up. And the other thing I want to tell you about is we're not leaving anybody behind. If you have not gotten your product up yet, who cares? Keep on moving forward. Reach out if you have questions. Your journey is different than mine, is different than Neil's. I mean, I'm way behind where Neil is, but as sure as heck, I'm not giving up. I'm looking up to him and I say to myself, I got to catch up to him and Jane. You know, it motivates me, it pushes me forward. So if your product's still not here or you don't have a product yet, that doesn't matter. Just keep on working towards it, reach out, ask questions, you know, and, and I'm talking Amazon, but it could be anything else, right? Some people here are writing books. So don't compare yourself and your journey to others, but do use it as an example, as an inspiration to move forward. And if you need help, reach out, please. I think, I think that would be it. <laughs> Wonderful. But and thank I, you. Yeah, I think, you know, that's so important. I know these calls, especially the general call, can be quite daunting. There may be people not wanting to speak or not wanting to express themselves or feeling unable to do that. There are smaller group calls, and yeah, any one of us, I'm sure, is happy to be reached out to. There are various ways we can be contacted. And, there's so much knowledge now in the group, particularly on things like Amazon, that everyone's always there. So don't just give up and get lost in this fog. Just 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 have a go and people will talk to you. And then gradually, you know, you 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 get as you get to know people, you'll talk, um, you know, you'll talk yourself, probably express yourself a bit more freely on some of the smaller group calls and then the bigger group calls. So don't don't be put off. We're all there trying to pull everybody forward and help each other. So thanks uh, very much, Evelyn, for those thoughts. I absolutely agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. Now, Mandy, great to see you. Hi there. Um, thanks for this, Adrian. Yeah, there's lots, a couple of bits that came up for me. I just want to say to Evelyn, thank you, Evelyn. Um, I think that's really good. And I think as we get closer and closer to Christmas, I think it's even more important that people start to reach out because people are going to be on their own every Christmas. Not everybody's got families here, etc. And I think people need to reach out over that time. But we can discuss that more as we get closer to it. Um, you were talking about a call to action, Adrian, and the first thing that came to my mind, because you, you are saying it's the end of the year. Um, and one of the things I found this year is something called the 12 week year. I don't know if anybody, I, I have mentioned it to some people, but I looked it up from the Facebook group because it used to be something they did in Blue Sky. But it's basically, it doesn't take um, December or a 12, week, a 12 month year, it takes a three month um, year. And it basically splits that down then into weeks and then into the week that you're actually in. But it looks forward to your goals in the future and says, these are your goals in the future. What are you trying to achieve in five years, 10 years? Um, and then it brings it down to three years. And then it basically allows you to say, what should I be working on in these three months? What should I be working on in this week? So every week, you know what you're focusing on. And if you meet it, then you'll, by the time you get to the end of the three months, you'll have done what you needed to do. And it helps you to focus. Um, that there is a there is an audible book and a book out there called the 12 week year and it's by Brian Moran and Michael Lennington and it is really worth a read um it will because I think my 12 week year ends actually doesn't happen to end in of December then you get a week 13 as a break and then so it will start again from January I haven't done it all correctly this is the first time I've done it I haven't done it all correctly I haven't stuck to everything but you can see what you haven't done you can see straight away what you should have been doing that you haven't been doing and that's what makes it so good um, and it, and I think on Friday, they're just about to put on a webinar for focusing and distractions and everything. So it's something I really need. There's accountability groups and all this sort of thing. But if you want to find, if you want to start the next year off and you want to plan, I know some people already do it in, in three months chance, but if you haven't done it before, this is a really good book to go and look at and a really good way to try it. Um, so it's called The 12 Week Year, Brian Moran and Michael Lennington. 
have a look at that. Great, Andy, great thoughts. I'm a great supporter of the 12 week year. Um, it makes a lot of sense. What they're really saying is if you break down into small periods, we can actually see the results tangibly. We don't forget where we are. We don't make a, re a New Year's resolution that we revisit in October. We're going to revisit it every three months. So they make the 12 weeks effectively each week is a month. Um, hmm. So instead of having a 12 month plan, you have a 12 week plan and you try and set mini goals and again, break the big goals down for the end of the three months into mini goals throughout the 12 weeks and then you won't lose your thread. It's all back to this New Year's resolution problem and the year end and breaking your train of thought and forgetting where you were and saying, oh gosh, yes, I had meant to do that and I had promised I would do that, but I haven't. So uh, great, that's a great reference, Mandy. I, I think it's a very useful tool. Well worth a look. And there are, there are downloadable templates as well for plans you can fill in. There's a lot of material on, on the net about that. Um, thanks, Mandy. Thanks for that. And uh, now we had Nicola. Hi, Nicola. Hi. Fantastic. Feeling very inspired. I think we need to listen to you every morning just to get our goals in, in place for the day. But um, one of the things that just came up for me as you were talking, you, you kind of mentioned um, you were a bit off track and not where you expected to be. And I think we'd probably all agree with that to a certain extent, but it just got me thinking. And I thought, you know what? It's also a good time for setting goals, but also for reflecting on what we have achieved this year. And I bet every one of us in this group might not be exactly where we thought we would be, but for lots of maybe obvious reasons, but we've achieved a hell of a lot. And I think if we just take a step back at the same time and reflect on where we've come from, it just, for me personally puts, sometimes we set ourselves goals that can be so big and stretching and scary that we continuously question, how the hell am I going to achieve that? And can I really do that? And just get ourselves tied up in that. But I was just sitting thinking two years ago this month, I was in a very stressful corporate um, role. I've been there a long time and I knew I wanted to change. And that's, that, believe it or not, is when I handed my notice in, I had to work a year and a half's notice. Um, but I, I'm literally sitting here now, and I know this might sound a bit cheesy, but living my dream, because that's what I envisaged two years ago, that I would be working from home, working for myself, building multiple streams of income, being creative, have got my own handmade wellbeing product range. It's live on Amazon as of yesterday. And that was scary at the time. And it doesn't feel like it day by day, but you obviously, you do achieve your dreams if you take action. And so I think it's just nice to reflect at the same time as looking forward and hopefully just give, gives you a bit of confidence and belief that you are doing it. You're doing it every day and you will get there. So yeah, just thought I'd share that. It's kind of just what came up for me. Great thoughts, Nicola. That, that's a great inspiration for all of us, really. And, you know, let, let's cast our mind back, you know, not even to two years ago, week 47 this week, week 47 last year. Did any of us dream that we'd be trading on Amazon, listing mm. products, creating online businesses, talking on Zoom? I, I mean, I certainly didn't. Um, so I think it just shows how much things can change if you push at it in a very short period. I mean, e even in week 20, I didn't know this was going to happen, let alone week, four, you know, week 47 last year. So anything is possible. If we start rolling the dice right now and dreaming and thinking and doing things as you've done, Nicola, uh, 2021 could be one heck of a year. Mm -hmm. It really could be. And it's, it's in our power. It is, it is down to us. Mo motivation, getting ourselves out of the chair. That's great inspiration, Nicola. Thanks very much for that. Thank you. And uh, Elmer has his hand up next. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Good to see everyone. Good Thank you so you. much. I haven't seen you for a while. I haven't seen you for I, a while. How are you? I know. I know. I've been so busy with um, some other side projects. Um, but Adrian, this is a fantastic topic at this time of year. I mean, you know, the year end is like fast upon us. And uh, like, you know, it's like coming like a freight train with without any breaks. And, um, you know, to your point, it's like everyone is reflecting on the past and, you know, what can I do? Um, but to, to that, I sort of say now, you know, having learned so much from the group, it's rather than looking at the past, look at what I've learned, like look at what I've taken in, look at all the positive energy that we've all brought to this group. 
And then what can I bring forward that can determine my new trajectory into the next year and uh, make it happen? I mean, you know, the, the, to the points that Evelyn, uh, Mandy and Nicola have said, I mean, we are all at different places that we could have never imagined um, we would be at this point, especially with this group. And um, Hung San and I always have this um, quote on our desk um, that, you know, we always keep reading. If you want something you never had, you have to do something you've never done. And we, we always read this to be like, you know what, if that's what we need to do to get what we want, let's do it. So thank you. Hey, Elmer, that, that's brilliant to hear that. Lovely quote as well. And I have to ask how Hung Sang's getting on as well. We haven't seen her for a while either, I don't think. How is she? Uh, yeah, she's good. I mean, she's loving her job. And like, it, it's great because the, uh, her, the person she reports to, who's the COO, has had a great rapport with her. She's built a great relationship. And, uh, you know, it's nice to be surrounded with like like-minded and uh, type individuals um, that, you know, value the what you bring forth and what you bring to the table. So she's been having a good time. I mean, it's still retail, so it's still very tough, but um, she's definitely missing everyone. Hey, listen, that's great to hear. And I tell you what, there can't be much more of an inspiring story than Hung Sang appearing on some of these calls, not wanting to speak, and then suddenly coming out, doing it, grasping the bull by the horns, and then going out for that tough interview process and getting the job. That is just a great, great sort of beacon for 2020 for me. I'll remember that for a long time. I think it's lovely. Yeah. And yeah, and she's grateful to the group because I think she got a lot of confidence from the energy that everyone put forth. So she is definitely grateful and thanks, thanks this entire team. Well, send her our best. Send her our best. We, hopefully we'll see her on a call at some point. Yes, but we'll, yes, we'll, we'll do. Give her still, I'm sure. We, we'll remember her for, forever. Thank yeah. You. Thanks, Elma. Um, Ego has a hand up next. Yay. Hi, Adrian. Good to see Hi, you back. I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you in good form. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the so many foods for thoughts, you know, very inspiring. Um, so for me, similar to what um, Nicola said, um, I would say I'm in a reflective mode. So for as much as I've missed many goals that I set for myself at the start of, well, not start of the year, because something you alluded to was seeing um, the, the year as a rolling effort. And that's something that I actually do. So um, even though I've missed several goals on a quarterly basis, so every, every three months, I've also achieved so much. So I kind of reflect, look back and, um, you know, think about some of the things that I actually didn't plan. I would say I've grown so much in the last uh, few months. I've achieved so much as well in the last uh, in the last six nine months even though i didn't plan for them um you know i would call them unintended positive outcomes i've had great results uh, i remember uh, some time back i had planned for five additional streams of income uh a few months ago i'd hit 10 and then there's plus one this is actually up to 11 now so I would say, you know, similar to the, 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 the quote from Wayne, you know, with the, with the closed doors, you just keep knocking them, knocking them open, even though it's closed, you don't accept it. And a lot of that um, will, I would say, and desire comes from the confidence that I've, I, I've actually gained from, from the group to try new things, explore, and, you know, even if the answer is no, just keep going back, you know, to a point where you annoy the other party, just, you know, just like you said. So, um, you know, I definitely do see my year and the year, any year as a rolling effort. So, you know, similar to uh, what Mandy said about the 12 week year. Uh, for me, it's rolling. I view uh, things on a three, you know, like a quarterly, three monthly basis. And if I have a bad month, I just reset, you know, it, it's one of those things. So um, the one last thought that I'd like to just kind of throw out there is in the last six months, we've all chosen to sow seed, right? And those seeds will reap harvest in a favorable way 
in the next month to into 2021 and beyond. And I know that that is the case for every single person, you know, where we then in turn become role models for each other. I think, you know, John touched yesterday on, on being role models. And I think it was Evie who finished off by saying, whether you see yourself as a role model or not, you are. And we're all in a place where we are encouraging each other. We're lifting each other, lifting each other up by choice, by design. And thanks again. Great, Ego. There's a lot of thoughts to take in there. Um, I love the fact you mentioned the harvest and, and the rolling 12 months, so important. It, the, the idea of a fixed 12 month year is really quite archaic if you think about it. And it does partly go back to the harvest and the fact that the old style year was fixed by nature and we couldn't control it centuries ago. We can now operate any time of the year and do anything we want pretty much any time. So we've got to think in a different way. The technology is there, online is there. We're, we're in a different world now to the ones they lived in when they set fixed calendars and 12 months was 12 months and you got back to the harvest cycle. If the harvest went wrong, you were in trouble. Everything is spread out now in a different way. And I love your diversification reference as well because of that. It's great to diversify and be thinking in 2021 about the backup income stream, the backup idea, because we've just seen that whole sectors can be taken out with no warning. So let, let's not forget that either in 20, 2021. Great, um, great thoughts, Ergo, as ever. Thank you very much for sharing those with us. Um, Therese has her hand up. Hello, Adrian. Hi. Thank you so much, everyone. Again, thank you so much for just being here and being together. Um, this is particularly uh, this is very inspirational and motivating for me. Um, you know, as the weather starts to change and the light starts to dim, um, it you know becomes a little more challenging to for me to stay you know in an elevated um, mood. So I'm doing the best that I can do on this end. And I definitely, this past week was feeling a little, um, just a little off. And, and uh, this just really helped me. Again, you know, everyone, Nicola um, reminding us to look back at the wins. I mean, if I think back to where I was eight months ago, um, you know, it's just profound. And, and it's funny because even though those were where I am right now, maybe was a dream, a, a, like a hint of a dream. It wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't laid out. It wasn't, I wasn't on the path until I really found blue sky. And then all of a sudden this path laid out. And, um, and again, everyone here is a part of um, the achievements that I've made in eight months. And um, you are so much, I guess, the foundation of it. And so I'm just thrilled and I'm honored to be a part of this and I, um, you know, this is actually one of my favorite times of the year because you get to, again, reflect on the past, but make some plans for the future. Um, and I really believe that this year, bigger than any in the past, um, is you know, just filled with really tangible, visible goals for 2021. And I just look forward to when we all get to be together so we can share more of our wins and uh, in person. So I, I think that's a real goal for 2021. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. It's great, Teresa. I mean, you've had a lot of wins and you're sounding one heck of a lot more just confident, really, than when we were speaking to you even a few months back. So that's that's been really great yeah. to see. There would have been a lot of knocks, you know, it been uh, knocked off of my, my foundation quite a bit. And so um, you guys are such a big part of building that back up for me. And I, I can't tell you how grateful uh, that, it, that I am and how important that is. And, and I think it's for me, when I'm out there in the world, I think about, you know, everywhere I've been, everything I know and the experiences that I've had and how it can be, um, it's really important to think about that when you're interacting with people, right? Um, it's our responsibility to lift people up. And without that, you know, we're missing out on a lot of goodness in people, right? So again, thank you all for being a part of that. And Therese, do New Year's resolutions work for you or do you find you get to a year end block, make the New Year's resolution and you just can't, you can't stick to it? No, I'm a very, um, a very diligent and devoted. Um, I don't really make resolutions. I think I make plans. Um, I think the hardest thing for me has been, um, 
Well, I don't really know. I mean, I, I get, I feel like the last four, four and a half, five years have been just nothing but starting over. So having goals and directions and ideas and achieving them and then trying to figure out how that's going to fit in. Like the, I've been gathering parts of my future in the last five years, I guess is the best way to say it, you know, with different certifications um, and, you know, different adventures, meeting different people living in different parts of the world and, um, you know, trying to, to pull it all together. And I feel like this is sort of like the ribbon, um, you know, around, around everything. And I'm starting to sort of pull things together and giving it a foundation and a form. And I'm thrilled. Um, the integrated nutrition um, coursework hopefully is coming. I'm, I'm trying to put that together and, um, and creating additional, you know, forms of income which I had never even thought of. So that's on the docket. And um, I really would love to write a book. I, I've been reading about it. I haven't, uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to figure out the ins and outs of that. So yeah, I mean, I guess the confidence is huge. And this group really provided that for me. And I think that was missing. It didn't have a lot of, wasn't surrounded by a lot of people that could give me that. And mine was fractured. So um yeah, this group is paramount. And again, if anyone's out there and they're in a, they're in a place where I was some time back, um, I'm here and I would love to inspire anyone. So reach out. <laughs> Thank great, you. Great, Therese. Yeah, reach out everybody, really do. You know, there might be people just listening in, just, just reach out, have a go, and you never know what you're gonna find. You really, you really don't. Thanks, Thank Therese. That's great. Yeah, thanks, Great. Adrian. Thanks a lot. And Yvie, how are you doing? Hi, Adrian. Thanks for your talk. Uh, really great. Um, I'm going to probably share quite a few analogies. Um, and guys, please just bear with me. Um, because as Adrian was talking, I just got thoughts popping into my head. And one of them basically was, don't ever regret the past, right? It's been, it's gone, it's behind you. Take the learning from those episodes, from those experiences, build them into what you're doing, grow from them, right? For the present, be grateful for the present, right? So whatever it is you're doing, just have an attitude of gratitude. So if you've got your health and you can still do stuff, be grateful for your health. If opportunities come your way that you think you can embark on, be grateful for those opportunities. Um, and then the future, that's yet to be. So don't be anxious about the future. You can't, you can't do anything about that. You can, you, can, you can dream of what you want the future to be like. But that whole causing yourself that anxiety, worry, sleeplessness, because you don't know what's to come, it's not going to serve you. It's, it's not an emotion that's going to bring anything positive your way, right? So those are the three things. Don't regret the past. Be grateful for the present. Don't be anxious about the future. And um, when I say that, the reason why I say that is if you think of a seed, you put the seed in dirt. That's what the ground is, right? That's what soil is. If that seed could talk, it'll probably say to you, what the heck are you doing to me? I don't want to roll around in dirt, right? But that seed, if you leave it in that dirt and you water it, at some point it has to break out of its outer layer, right? And as it breaks out, that's when the new shoot comes forth. And after a few days, you actually see the shoot coming off from the ground, but to push against the soil to come up, that's effort, right? So initially, whatever environment you might be in, you, you might not like it. It might not be your default environment. It might not be where you think you can thrive. But if you just go through the process and you're watered, you will come out and you'll be more than the one seed that went into the soil. You don't plant a seed of corn and only get one seed of corn back. You get a whole plant and on that plant, there are quite a few ears of corn, right? So whatever it is you're thinking, you have to bury in the dirt somewhere know that it's going to multiply exponentially when you get the harvest, right? So it might not look like much today, but just keep being consistent of what you're doing. The effort you're putting in today, when it starts yielding the rewards, it's going to be so much more than what you thought the effort you were putting in today and tomorrow and the next must have been costing you. It's, it's, it's The returns are just going to be incredible, right? So don't give up. Don't don't, don't sell yourself short by giving up before you get to the goal, before you start getting the rewards. Just, just carry on it. little by little every day. Keep doing what you need to do. At that point, the tide will turn 
and it will have no choice but to give you the rewards that are due to you. It, you, can't, you can't miss that. It's a cycle of life, right? And so what, what am I saying is if we look at this mastermind group, this year has been of chaos, uncertainty, but look at what has been birthed here. How many of us in this group could say we were Amazon buffs at the start of the year? With every e-commerce session with Stuart, I know more about Amazon and I'm thinking, what? There's even more to learn? You know, and just when you think you got something down, there's something new tomorrow, or they've changed something, or they tweaked something, that's learning. You may not need it now, but it might come to the rescue tomorrow, or it might be something you can use to help somebody else. So what I'm saying as well is part of what you're going through may not necessarily be just for you. It's most likely to help somebody else. So you might think you're a mess right now, but guess what? That mess you think you're in today could very well become your message tomorrow, where when you share how you come through that mess on the other side, you're a voice of reason to somebody else. So don't beat yourself up and say, you know, let's, let's look at it. You may not be where you want to be, but you're certainly not where you were. You've taken steps. You've made progress. So give yourself on the back for saying, you know what, girl? You know what, dude? You've come a long way. You may not have gotten to the destination, but you're not at the start line anymore. You've actually taken steps towards the destination. So don't be too hard on yourself. You know, look at the things you have accomplished. I mean, some of us, when we started January, how many of us knew that we were still going to be standing come the 17th of November. It's not because we're special. It's not because we've done anything fantastic. It's not because we've done anything to deserve this. We're here because we still have a part to play. We still have a contribution to make. So every day you get up where your faculties are complete, your health, you know, you still got it. You've still got your business on the go. You can still talk to suppliers. You can still join a Zoom call, whatever it is, be grateful because you may have gone to bed last night and not woken up this morning, then what, right? So just be grateful, be present and use everything you've got to push forward. It's never as bad as you think it is. If you think it is, go find somebody else. There's always gonna be somebody worse off than you are, right? So it's, it's all relative and it's just all about perspective. But as we get to the end of this year, yes, it's five weeks to go. Let's be grateful for those five weeks because there are steps we can take that can set us up royally for 2021. We can cross over into 2021 much better than we are today. Five weeks is still a lot of time to get stuff done. I mean, John likes that word done, right? There's still time to get stuff done. You haven't run out of time. So let's make every day count. Let's do something that at least is gonna yield a reward further down the line. Don't give up on yourself. There's still so much you can do before 2020 is over. But at the same time, just look at how far we've come as a family. We're all standing, we all have a sense of humor, we all get to laugh together. I mean, there's just so much. We are a force to be reckoned with. Not everybody has been as um, blessed or lucky or you know, fortunate as we have in this group to have people across the world that are pretty much part of your network I mean, I don't think if you reached out to anybody on this call, they turn you down or say they didn't have time to talk to you or they couldn't be there for you. How many people can say that? You're not alone. So don't buy into that mindset of isolation. You are not on your own. You've got an immediate network here of people who are willing to root for you, whatever it takes. So it's just amazing, right? So let's just have that mindset go into 2021, excited about what the future has in store for us because it's bright it's good. And there's stuff we can still make happen. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks, everyone. Wow, Ivie, you've just emitted enough power to push us all over the finish line, I think, <laughs> for 2020, that's for sure. That was an absolutely brilliant summary and brilliant thoughts. And as always, you're just such a positive, motivating person that uh, I think you could, you could motivate all of us in one go just, just from those, those words. Um, and yeah, just remember, John uh, gave us a series of videos to watch. Those of us that were there in well, way back March, April, uh, and one of them uh, connected to Ivier's gratitude statements referred to gratitude rocks. I've got my little gratitude stone. I'm not sure who else still has them, but the idea was that the, uh, after a, a very special event for this gentleman, he carried around these gratitude stones in his pocket to remind him throughout the day what he was grateful for. And that was just such a beautiful thought that I've 
been trying to do it ever since. It, it was it was a wonderful video, and John will have the links to it, I'm sure, if we asked him. Um, yeah, I mean, again, the seeds, wonderful to hear about the seeds again. Uh, Coila also reminded us that every beautiful lotus flower grows in the mud. So we don't start from a perfect place, but we can grow these beautiful flowers from, from the mud. Um, nothing's ever going to be perfect. It, it reminds me of the old Irish story asking directions to Dublin of an old gentleman at the side of the road in Ireland. And the first thing he said was, oh, well, I wouldn't have been starting from here. Well, you know, that, that sums it up. We're, we're never going to be starting in a perfect place to get anywhere, but you can go somewhere from anywhere and nothing can stop you. So I 100% agree with you. I think that was beautiful thoughts and such power to uh, finish off today and power us through week 47 to the, uh, to the launch pad for 21. So, th thanks, Sylvia. That was great. And Nancy has a hand up. Great to see you, Nancy. <laughs> Oh, that's a tough act to follow, Ivier. I don't know about that. <laughs> I can't even come close. Um, oh my goodness, what an incredible topic, Adrian. I mean, I'm uh, I've been up a long time this morning. It's morning for me. Um, I was kind of sleepy and got on here, and I'm just like, whoa. I mean, you are wow, powerful presentation, very insightful and inspiring. I wanted to share that um, just a win that I'm excited about. So I haven't shared with you guys during since I've known you since May, but um, you know I've been on un unemployment and at the same time I've always been continuing to apply for new work. I've applied for probably eight jobs in six months and I've had one interview. During that time, um, I just got another uh, interview coming. So I'm really excited. It's for um, a teaching position and I haven't been teaching English language learners for a long time, but I'm certified in it K through six. And it's a part time gig um, filling in for somebody who's I don't know on leave or something but that's happening this week and that has come at a really good time for me because last week was a few things really pulled me down. So that's just really exciting. And then the other thing is I want to say just reflecting back on my year, I would never in my wildest dreams, think that I would be connected to a group of people like you guys, okay, at all, or even believe that I could have some entrepreneurial thing happening. So that's really cool. The other thing, just in reflection, is something that John said a long time ago that really filled me and has stayed with me, which is, you know, don't get attached to the instrument. So I'm not, I'm not attached to Amazon. I've, I'm putting that on the back burner, not doing anything with that right now, but I am attached to this new opportunity um, that I took on this coaching and certification, life coaching and certification program. I'm four weeks in, couldn't be happier. So I just wanna extend all of my wins and my feeling of confidence and mojo because of each of you. So thank you so much. Oh, well, that's lovely, Nancy. You're a wonderful person and really, I think you're proof that the opportunities don't always come in the form we expect them. But if we're pushing in the right direction with the right mindset, opportunities will come up. And as long as you know your ultimate goal and they get you closer, that's great. They may not be in exactly the shape initially that we thought they would be, but they still get us forward. Certainly happened to me a lot this year. Who knew we'd be sitting here now talking about this now? I cer certainly didn't. So that, that, was, a, that was lovely to, of you to share that, Nancy. Thank um, you. Now, I see no further hands up, Nancy. So... Unless John wanted to say something at this point, uh, maybe give us the link to the gratitude rocks, John, if you can post it in Facebook <laughs> or something, uh, that would be that would be lovely. The gratitude rocks. Thank you for for talking about uh, thinking forward, right? Looking looking to the future, with uh, with inspired thoughts. Uh, reminded me of something that um, Wallace Waddles said in the Science of Getting Rich, and and it has to do with not validating. Uh, and thereby augmenting our, our troubles, uh, that which we validate expands. So um, don't talk about your problems. Don't talk about being broke. Don't talk about the troubles in business. We're, we're going forward. We're going forward. And that's, that's kind of like the underlying theme of what I got here today. And, and many of us don't know the mechanisms of, of moving forward. We don't know how to reach a goal until we've reached it. But with that expectation what will we attract? And this is directly in line with stuff we've been re reading and thinking grow rich with every crisis comes the seed of an equal or greater opportunity. I can't think of a better group of people that I would want to go this on this journey with. So, um, so thank you, Adrian, always brilliant as always brilliant.
Adrian, ladies and gentlemen, Adrian, there he is. No, John, you're too, <laughs> kind. You're too kind. You, we love listening to you, John. You just give us such inspiration every, every time you speak. And, uh, oh, thank you. you know, it's just great to be here. It's great to be here. It's given me a heck of a boost. And uh, it's really made me think. I think I think we've all got to make ourselves think. Sometimes we can just get lost in the daily grind, but this forces you to think every day and take stock, which is what we've got to do. If It's right. hard going sometimes. Look, at 5 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have Corporate Curios with Ivia Barnabas. And at 8 p.m. Eastern, Adventures in Mindset with Stuart Wild. So the day is just getting started. Let's get yeah. some work done. And uh, I guess some of us will meet in the hospitality suite. i got to run to another meeting right now, but I will see you guys tonight. So thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks a million. Thanks for joining in. Take care. Bye for now. Goodbye.